The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, yes, and can everyone hear me? I have, can anyone hear me? Great, uh, I'm sorry earlier, I silly mistake by me. I actually uh, forgot to unmute myself, yes. And um, let me restart this all over again, okay? My name is Chun Ming. I am the principal consultant for Olandera. And here we are talking about the project management for DevOps, okay, and a very brief introduction on what we'll cover in this webinar is we are going to cover how we could, you know, manage DevOps project because managing DevOps project is not exactly easy. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to decide what are the methodologies that we should use in order to, to adopt DevOps, right? Because Adopting a DevOps project is not as simple as adopting a software development project. Because here, in this case, we are doing something different, like we are adopting a whole new culture or a new environment or new mindset altogether. You know, things like operational development or software development has been in place for the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years. But DevOps is something new. Uh, something that people are trying to adopt now. So why is it different from a lot of other uh, projects? Because first of all, when you have a different culture, you we want to have something that suits it. So when we choose a methodology for DevOps, we need to make sure it fits into the ideology of DevOps. See, the idea of DevOps is we want to bring people together. We want to have an open communication, right? We want to push our product or our software faster 
to the production environment or faster to the market. With that being said, there are a lot of methodologies out there, but the most common thing here is we are leaning towards agile methodologies. There are people using extreme programming, Scrum, Kanban, or any other lean-based uh, methodologies. But why do we need this? Because with this very uh, methodologies, we are actually you know, trying to adopt to the ideology of DevOps itself. Because again, DevOps is something that we move constantly. We want to be always there first, fast out there, right? It's not like where in software programming, we have a certain life cycle. We take our time with it. We cannot do the, the traditional waterfall methodology and so on anymore, okay? So, but that does, does it mean that we are constricted to this very specific methodology that we choose, okay? I, for, for one I know is, we could actually make use of a few methodologies together, okay? For example, there was a client that Olinda has been working with, and first we started off with a scrum methodology whereby we, we had a sprint, we have the tasks, and then we have deadlines and everything. Obviously, it doesn't work out. So the next thing is we say, let's try out Kanban. So Kanban turns out great, but then again, we missed out on the part or, of importance or deadlines or when needs to be done and so and so. So when we have things like this, we will say, okay, why not let's take the combination of Scrum and Kanban together. With Kanban, we have a set of tasks that we need to ship out immediately we want to get it out and then with scrum we have a set of timeline with a sprint maybe and then we have like some sort of performance more uh, measurement and so on so on so when we combine these few methodologies together we can actually make sure it says okay this is how we could do it and this is how we should work towards it to achieve our goal into becoming a fully uh, recognized or fully adopted DevOps project itself because it all starts with the methodology itself because again DevOps is a culture that we are adopting so in order to adopt a new culture we need to adopt to the a new way of working when we adopt to a new way of working with new methodologies or a hybrid methodology then that will be our workflow from from the first day to the last day until our project ends or to the end of time. So it's very important that the project managers itself made it clear what type of methodology we choose and it's always important for the project manager itself to ensure that the team's direction is heading towards the goal using our methodology that we have chosen. Because if we do not choose it, then it's pointless, right? Because then that way we are not adopting or trying to adopt the idea of DevOps itself. Okay, so the next thing here is with, with DevOps and project management, it's very important to keep track of all our issues and all our tasks, right? The most important thing is issue tracking, in, in my very opinion. The main reason is because that, you know, we are moving at a faster pace than anyone, okay? With DevOps, we are always wanting to push our product out. We want to push our fixes, our patches. We want to get our feature first out to the market, out into production. But that being said, we have all the testing and everything, but there are always issues coming up. So it's very important that we, we keep track of these issues because when we keep track of all these issues, then we can actually put them into our project management. We can do re-estimation. We can uh, reintegrate the whole thing into our whole development life cycle or the project life cycle itself. Because again, based on our methodology and issue tracking might not be you know um, classified by importance it might be classified by how fast we can 
push it out. Okay, we do not want to keep pushing the issues all the way down, down to the uh, packing order, right? We want it to be okay. If I create an issue, I must fix it. I don't want to wait it till later. And all this issue tracking is important because it helps us to get it out there. We want to be able to reproduce it and we want to keep track of the status, whether it's being fixed or it's not going to be fixed and so on. So that is my opinion. This is one of the very important thing when it comes to DevOps. All right, the next thing is task, all right? When, when we dis create a task or when we assign a task in typical project management, we just say, this is what we want and get it, all right? We are telling people to say, okay, this is um, what I want you to do. But in fact, right, as a task, we should be saying that this is what I want to show everyone. This is what I want everyone to have. Okay? We are not saying that this is what I want. This is what you should say, what you want everyone to have. Okay, when you say, okay, now we have this task, okay, then we say we want everyone to have this. And then, but it's a big feature. In this task itself, you can say, okay, install this, develop this, okay, fix this. The thing is, in traditional or as much as any uh, project management that I've seen, uh, one lacking thing about our task management for projects is we lack details. We need details, right? We need precise and concise details on what our task is all about. It's like a story, okay? So basically we are creating user stories on what is going to happen, what will happen if we develop, uh, de deliver this task, what's the end goal? We want to be able to say, this is the task and this is the full description of it. It's like a storybook. So in the storybook then, we can have a smaller task that tells us how to achieve each of these tasks. Okay, so I have a story A that tells me I will deliver feature A, and I have a story that says what it could do. But then again, feature A is a big thing, and it's a big story, but how do we get there? At this point, the project manager should be breaking the task down into smaller pieces. And then these small little pieces will have the same thing. We have some description on how to achieve it because with these smaller pieces, we are breaking things down to smaller components that now either an individual or a team can work towards delivering the story because everything starts with a story in project management. So the task itself is very important. We start off with a story, then we start off with a task, and each of these tasks has its own status, whether it's a new task, whether it's an in-progress task, or whether it has been reviewed task, or a completed task. And then, after that, we, we want to deliver it. And in this task, we need to make sure every single communication happens within this story or this respective task because we are talking about devils we are talking about collaboration everyone needs to be able to see what you are doing so they can actually pitch in or help you whenever it's necessary when or whenever you ask for help we do not want to keep it to ourselves as if we are taking total ownership of this thing yes we might be taking total ownership of this thing but that does not isolate us from the others. We should be able to accept help or accept suggestions or criticisms from others in order to make the work better. Next thing we need to be sure about is deadlines, okay? In traditional environment, we always have a hard deadline saying that I want to deliver this product in two weeks. I want to deliver that in three weeks. I want to deliver it in one month, one year, few months, few weeks, few days, right? So deadline is an important thing to a lot of traditional organization. But then again, in DevOps, 
we are not exactly having a hard deadline because what we could do is, or what we are doing is, we are actually trying to get it out to the market as soon as possible. True enough, we have all the tools to get our DevOps environment going. We have the configuration management tools, we have the monitoring, we have the um, analysis, we have the continuous integration or testing or version control. We have all these tools to help us to get to the point. But as a project manager for any DevOps project, you cannot put a hard deadline to say, I want this on this date because this is actually restricting on what we could do. Right in DevOps, what we we want to do is be able to say, okay, I finished this, I push it out right now. I don't want to wait it till the end of the cycle, then only start pushing it because then we are falling behind. We are not adopting to the idea of DevOps itself. When we want to adopt to the idea of DevOps, and the idea of DevOps is getting out everything as fast as we can without compromising the quality right so which means in a fully in a full setup or a proper integrated setup with all your development and continuous integration testing or your monitoring and everything that you have in your your devops stack right a deadline will almost be no longer relevant i did not say it's no longer relevant it's almost no longer relevant because now Whenever someone code out something, they can just push their code or push the product straight into the testing um, mechanism or the testing platform, which in place will do all it needs to ensure the product is ready for the market or deployment or production. So that way, do we see any deadline in that sort of thing? We don't see deadlines anymore. We are actually saying, oh, my product is out, it's ready. My fix is out, it's ready. So because we can say that is because now we don't have a fixed deadline. True enough, there are certain things that might have a deadline, but we cannot explicitly say, this is my deadline, this is where I want it, this is how I want it. Because with that, it's not DevOps. It's more traditional organized. It's very scrum where we have a sprint, right? But even in a sprint, if that's our timeline. We could finish this within this week, or we could finish it faster, or we could finish it after, depending on what is blocking our work and so on. So the next thing about project management for DevOps is, uh, just like any other projects, we want to measure the performance. Okay, by measuring performance, we we know how our team is behaving, how our project is. Are we delivering things on time? Are we doing things well? Are we uh, uh, encountering problems that help prevent us from delivering something? So all this performance measurement, all these numbers, all this uh, KPI is very important because as a project manager, you're not only liable to lead to your team but you are also responsible from reporting it back to the management so that is why in the pre as i mentioned earlier when we have a user story for a specific task we this we say okay this task is worth 10 points this story is worth 10 points if i can complete this story as soon as possible and that will be my performance measurement isn't it because when I complete the story, I get 10 points for my work. And then more and more. So as more and more engineers complete their work based on story and points, and then your points keep going up. When your points keep going up, this shows your performance is actually going up. And then you can show to your management that say, hey, this is our performance measurement for this week. This is our performance measurement for last week. And this is our performance measurement projected for next week. So because when we have a point system or performance measuring system, we can do a projection of how we can perform in the future tasks. And when we can also see how are we performing 
currently and in the past, we can do a comparison. Are we improving? Are we dropping? Okay. When we are dropping our performance, then something needs to be done. What is wrong in the process? If our performance is improving, great. Maybe we can just continue doing the way we are, or we can improve it further to ensure our performance keep going up, right? Because again, performance measurement is very important for for all the project managers. They are always responsible to report something back to the management and the management. All they want to see is numbers. Are we doing well? How many percentage of work have we completed? What is our KPI and so on. So we need to have some sort of project management tool or uh, capability to measure all this. And then the most important thing in DevOps when it comes to project management, again, is I might have mentioned it before, is transparency. Okay, we have a task, we have a user story, we work on a task as an engineer. But usually we keep it to ourselves and say, okay, this is how I do it, how I've done it, how I fix it. And then we will only expose information or reveal information whenever someone asks us, hey, how's your work? Um, do you need any help? Or uh, uh, have you, uh, do you having problem? What's the progress like? Then only we tell them, okay, um, we are doing well, I'm doing great, this is my problem, maybe I need this, I might need help from another team, and so on, right? So that is not ideal. As a project manager for DevOps-related projects, you need to encourage transparency, meaning that you are always communicating with another engineer or the team what is the progress of your work. You need to be transparent with your progress, saying that, hey, I have this problem, I, have, I need help, can someone lend me a hand? Or this is my status, it's waiting for review. Time to review it, time to push it. And then, or I'm having a blocker, this is my problem, I need to talk to someone else to get this done. Or this is how I fix the problem. So maybe you can fix it in another task that it has the same similar issue. Because when we have transparency in DevOps related project, then we will say, oh, okay, now I'm able to do this because this guy is doing uh, so and so. Or I have this issue, but engineer B also had the same issue and he fixed it first. So maybe I can take a, take a look at his code and how he did it. So how can we achieve all this? We can achieve all this when in our task itself, we are very transparent about it. We keep updating it as if we are updating our Facebook status pages or we are updating our blog or Twitter, anything. If we are so actively on Facebook updating our status, why can't we just use this you know, initiative to update our status of our task on our project management tool itself? Because when that happens, everyone in the team can see what is happening. They can have a discussion or a debate or, a, or just a advice on how to get things done or just to see what is happening, what is the progress. That way, the project manager, as a project manager, I can keep track of your work without having need to go to you every day and say, hey, John, hey, Sam, what is the status of my project? What's the status of the work? Is anything blocking you? Do you need any help from anyone, right? Because that is time consuming and the project manager might be too busy and might be handling five, six other different projects. But if the project manager gets to see everything on the project management tool itself that says, hey, this is his progress. Oh, looks like he's doing great. Maybe I just can't leave him to it, or I just go and say, give him some sort of encouragement. Or I'm looking at another engineer and his work is not doing great because he has some problems. He has having some issues. Maybe I can, then I'll say, maybe I can connect him with another engineer who has the same problem or working together so they can come up with a solution together. So that is very important because now we are actually blurring the lines between teams, right? Because again, DevOps is about a culture of communication. There is no 
organizational silos anymore. We are blurring the line between engineering team, development team, operations team, QA team, or whatever team that you have. We are blurring the lines between them. We are trying to work together. So when we work together that way, and we have such transparency, and this is how we are actually achieving DevOps. So the next thing is we need a tool set to actually help us to manage all this project management. As a project manager, you need to be able to keep track of all your user stories, your deadlines, if you have any, your tasks, your issues, your communication between team members, or what are the progress of their projects and everything. So there are a lot of tools out there, right? There are tools like Jira, Trello, People Tracker, and a lot more. Okay, so with this tool, we, we need to be able to select the, the best tool out there because why? A tool that can integrate with an existing DevOps stack like the configuration management, the notification, the chat, the log analysis, the, the continuous integration development task, uh, platform itself, right? Because we want our tool to be able to integrate with all these DevOps Tool set because when we can do so, we can do saying, okay, if someone create a issue on the GitHub or GitLab, it should be also be reflected into our project management tool so that I know, oh, this is the issue is happening. You will create a card, you will create a, a task itself on our project management tool so we can keep track of what they are doing. We want to be able to keep track of what our engineers are doing. So it's very important that we have such integration between tools where we can shoot out notifications, we can pull and uh, view all these issue trackings or these uh, wiki pages or these um, tasks or user stories, right? And then all the results of these um, testing platforms and everything, because when we have all this, it makes our life a lot easier to manage a project and it gives us a better control over the overall view of the entire project itself. Okay, again, like I mentioned, there's a lot of tools out there. The most popular one is being like Jira and Trello. There's also Pivotal and there's also um, Taiga.io, which is what I'm going to cover today uh, as part of this uh, webinar itself. So, the next thing that I would like to introduce to you is Taiga.io. What is Taiga.io? It's an open source project management tool similar to Trello or Jira itself, but it's open source. You can use it on for free uh, or you can pay for a subscription for them, or you can actually de deploy them internally within your own setup. Okay, and so, how do we actually use taiga.io? So I, I've taken the liberty of setting up taiga.io locally on my machine here. So with, with some sort of sample data. So we'll let's take a look and see how it can help us to achieve better project management comparable to the tools out there. All right, so um, if you can see this, so this is your taiga.io page, right? So this is the login page, which you can, sim you can see is like pretty much similar to maybe GitHub, if you are very familiar with. We can see at like the most liked projects or the most active projects in whatnot and or feature projects. So, but first of all, these are all public projects. There are obviously private projects that we can use and so whatnot. Let me log in. So now here, we, this is an overview of my administrator user. It can tell me which project is active, which project is private, which project is public, and it will. I will be only able to see private projects that I'm involved in, obviously. 
okay and if you click on the top here you, you point it right there you can see I have five different projects in my own list and I'm managing all I'm either managing or I'm part of all five of them okay let's take a look at one of these project samples okay how does it actually work so in here you can see when you log in into this uh, look into the project itself what we can see here is we can see the timeline of activities and on top of the timeline here you can see all these are tags all right we can you can tag each project with specific tag to to say okay this belongs to this uh, project tag and so on and then we can see here all the timeline of what's happening in this project itself is creating uh, issues or creating user stories in this project and who's updating it how which user are we adding and so on also what the best part about this project is we can say okay i need help or i need people in this project that way and then you see something like this here this says okay this project is looking for people maybe you can request to join this project so when when we are doing this right so our devops project management becomes a lot more easier you can have a team of engineers working on different projects but somehow if they're they're much more free or have some free time on their hand they will be interested in helping out in another project this is where you can say okay this project needs people please join us and so all right so as we can see here this is just the timeline but what type of project is this this i will call this a hybrid project first of all because we have a backlog here which is used for scrum so in scrum we have sprints okay we can create sprints here right and then we can say all right i want to have a sprint and it's from when to when all right 30 december to 14 january all right and how many did i close how how many are there in total okay and th th these are our tasks or stories for the sprint so let me click on the sprint task board and then you can see here my user story first is to create a html template this is my new task what is in progress what is ready for testing and which task has be completed or which task needs more information so let's first take a look at a user story okay when we create a user story we we can say okay what is this is ready for testing or what are the points there is these are the point system that i was talking about so we can do some sort of kpi management who am i assigning it to who's watching it and uh, descriptions or custom fields that you can add and then you can see here you can add specific tasks that is related to this story so that way we can say okay this task will actually help you to 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 finish up this story when this story is finished i will get the full 53.5 points which is great there's a lot of points all right and then here we can say all right i need more information customer requirement lock the the uh, item because it's it's a blocking item or whatnot so and then we have like comments we can view activities what's happening all right and now let's take a look at this task that is related to okay now we can see i have a task i have who who, who am i assigned to okay this task belongs to which parent okay you can put uh, details in it you can add more tags you can add custom fields you can add attachments or comments on what's happening in this task itself because it's very important that we communicate with our engineers or our engineers update this comments on this task so that we can actually see what is exactly happening because when we know that this task is complete at the end of the day we can just mark it as close and then we go back to this and then ready for testing and then we just like done and then we'll see in here 
we get extra we should be getting extra points for completing all our work all right so here in here you can see that we have a lot of user stories all right we have a lot of user stories that says in total i have a predefined set of uh, points which is here and how many points have i closed and how many points do i have in my sprint and obviously you can see a little bit here our sprint here i just created 50 i closed the 53.5 so it increased a little bit okay and then now we can see here that this is a total project points that was created by but estimated was just this much and with this point and sprints we can say points between sprints here is it going down is it going up right if our points are going up as as we complete it that would be great because we are performing well but if our points are still down when we are actually have much more to do that means our performance is pretty bad and we need to do something about it isn't it so this is the scrum part of this project but let's now take a look at the kanban part so earlier i mentioned that we have a lot of uh, hybrid stuff right we can have the hybrid of kanban we can have a hybrid of scrum and few other methodologies together so but in taiga we are focusing towards kanban and scrum or you can mix them both together to get what you want so for those who's been using jira or trello you'll see something very similar into this you can just say okay this i'm working on this project right now and let's add to it and this ready is it in progress ready for testing okay and then how many points is it worth and then you can see here my my story is done my task is done so i don't have to uh, to work on it anymore right so there we go we can see here exactly what has been mapped from the backlog task into our kanban so we we get a better view of both for an engineer probably we are just interested in looking at our task board of kanban here but as a project manager we will want to see what is happening in our entire project backlog what is happening okay what what is going on how our sprints going and the points and problems or whatnot on top of that of course we have issue tracking with this issue tracking we get to see the severity of it how fast we should fix it is it rejected ready for testing is it postponed let's take a look at one of one of the issues and here you can see all right it's a question it's the severity and it's high and priority is high so we can see what is happening we can add attachments and more comments right so the thing here is we have integration with github or gitlab so whatever that we updated in our gitlab or github's issue tracking we can bring all those data through the api and put it in here so we can have a updated view of what the engineer doing directly here we don't have to have the engineers to to update it in github and gitlab and then have to update it in in the taiga itself because it's very troublesome to you know um to open two different dashboard to see some information but what if you can just synchronize both of them through an api and you can update on one dashboard it gets updated on the other right that way it makes a lot of things more simpler for us so and of course we have things like a wiki page and we can see a team okay we can say all right which team you are belong to um you can add you say whether you're bug hunter or whatnot you see design team who's in the design team product owner and so on and of course you can check the uh, project details itself you can see how many number of sprints how many points you and then is it a public or private project or like i mentioned you can say are you looking for people or not maybe i say no i'm not looking for people or yes i'm looking for people because sometimes we just want to say we want people to voluntarily volunteer themselves to a specific project that they might find interesting okay so we have a lot of things that we can add like attributes 
that the members to this project we can have permissions or we can have uh, integrations here we can have uh, webhooks gitlab github bitbucket or we can even have uh, chat integrations like integration to hipchat itself and uh, we can see oh this is what's happening and that's what's happening and then we can see it on our chat all right so very simple right here that we have everything or related to our uh, project management but i did not really show you how we could create a project so first of all we can just point it up here click create projects and then here we can say all right we want it's a template selection so you don't have to worry too much about it you can choose one and then modify it later let's just say i want to go with kanban because i'm the engineer okay i want to create a project and let's just say tiger demo project demo purpose and there so we have a predefined set ready and then we can create new user stories and so on but then again but what if we want to have more than this so we have the timelines we have the kanban board we have the team we can change the team names obviously so but if we want different things let's change it okay we can have the default values the modules in this part we say we enable the kanban right but as an engineer i want to have my issue tracking enable my issue tracking okay and also i want my wiki page that's it i do not need anything else i save it and now you can see i have my kanban board i have my issues page right i can create new issues and so on or i can just create a new new uh, user story or i can just uh, click keep creating them and then i have my wiki page i can create a new link for something that i want and i can assign people to it or or whatnot okay so then again but now you have a project but let's just say now a project manager is assigned to your team and the project manager wants to see what else is happening in the project from a management perspective so you can go to modules and you say all right i want to add the backlog so this is part where i get to see my scrums and everything okay save it now i have a backlog there we go so now we can have all right i have my backlog itself i can start creating new user stories okay where i can determine the number of points is it a team requirement or is it client requirement is it a block or uh, which category is this how many points should i give it to them which status of it is it ready in progress done or is it archive you can create more tags out of this and so on so when we do that it becomes a lot more simpler to manage things right so taiga is a is a new project but yet is widely used and i find it very very flexible because you can do a lot of things with it on top of it it's open source so you can install it yourself and start using it internally there are a lot of plugins available that you can start using it for okay so let's just go back here so you can see here this is a um, private project if i want to make it a public project i can just say public project save it and now I can no longer see the lock sign and everything is a public project. I, I can like it and and there we go. So that is the Tiger uh, demo itself. Okay, so now I would like to end the demo. Okay, and I would like to proceed to Q&A if you have any question. So does anyone have any questions? If you have any questions, please you can type it on the chat or type it under the questions box and I will I'll answer it as if I can.
No questions? So if there is there are no questions, then I would like to thank all of you for joining the webinar. Okay. And um, okay, actually I see that Amit has raised a question or actually I have a question for okay and um, I was asked that can Taiga be integrated to Jenkins? Well at this point I have not seen any plugins for Jenkins yet, but you can still write a write a plugin for yourself, or you can use webhooks to make it work. There are APIs to make it work, so it's so it's an open source project, and you can definitely work with the uh, Taiga team because they are very responsive when it comes to questions. So it's great to work with them. Okay. How okay? So uh, then the next question I get is how many production projects are actually using this? Okay, I cannot answer you for sure because there are a lot of people using Taiga. If you go to the website itself, taiga.io, okay, then you should be able to see it. Just hang on, let me show you. So these are all public projects, right, in Taiga. This is their cloud offering of the Taiga itself. But then again, you can, you know, sign up and take a look, but obviously it does not include the um, private projects. So it's very, very hard to tell you how many people are actually using this in production. And the other thing is, I have another question. Okay, what is the major difference between this tool and Jira, okay. Um, I I would say there are there there aren't much of a difference, okay. But the major difference here that I can say is, Taiga is a very clean and simple tool, right? It allows you to work with a lot of existing tools out there. It's an open source tool that you can install it yourself, meaning there is no um, uh, licensing cost or fees. Right, and um, with Jira, it's very, it most it works best, especially when it comes to it with its own tool like Bamboo or uh, Bitbucket or anything. So basically, anything with within the Atlassian uh, environment, it works best with each other. But with Taiga, it allows it's an open source tool, right? So it allows you to be integrate with a lot of other uh, open source tool out there. And best part is is open source so if you have any problem you have a bug with this uh, project you just shoot out an email or shoot a question on the mailing list and the next thing you know someone will be answering your question and then fixing the problem with it for you within the next few minutes it's like as i was setting up this uh, demo like a couple of days ago you know i had an issue setting it up i sent out an, a question through the mailing list and the CIO say, okay, I fixed this and I backported it to the stable branch. Can you check it out? So this kind of thing makes a lot more beautiful because I call it beautiful because the, the open source ecosystem is great, right? Everyone's uh, working together with uh, this and that. Okay, and uh, the next thing is, uh, well, the main advantage over Jira, I can't really, tell you what are the advantage of using Jira over Taiga or Taiga over Jira is depends on you as the project manager that says, hey, I like this tool better than that tool because it can do this for me. So every project manager have uh, different expectations. For me, I like this Taiga tool because first of all, it's an open source tool. Olin Data is an open source company, so we love open source tools, especially with great support and great community. Okay, it's, uh, it's clean and beautiful, it's very responsive, and mind you, it's just running on a very simple one gigabyte virtual machine and one CPU core, and you can see all the smoothness all over the place. It has a lot of... Uh, uh, integration, open source integration, it has Slack integration, GitHub, GitLab, 
uh, a lot of plugins that it have I is so many that I can't really name them all and um, and how what else would I say about it is the best of it is like I don't have to pay anything to it if I install it locally but if I want I can uh, pay for it and I use it on the cloud itself okay so um, the next question is I have is do I have any finance or banking sector client or logo known as user which were this online trainings okay um, this is okay this webinar recording will be emailed to all of you later so that you can view it from our uh, website itself so you have it and the prerequisite for installing this Taiga tool is mainly Linux so if you can have it installed on a simple Ubuntu server or Linux server is great um, it will have a Postgres setup it has um, uh, it has its own uh, Node.js setup it has this um, what else uh, Circus as has Python and Django and a few others but then again for the hardware requirements it depended on how many users are you having so usually i think maybe four to eight gigabyte of ram with three or four cores should go a long way and then obviously you need to have a proper um hardware uh, or, or this space management for your projects itself okay so that will be the uh, prerequisite it does not support windows because it's web-based so you can just install it on one linux server and then just uh, start using it up out from the web okay and the next question is how do we promote this tool to the market okay um actually we are uh, this question to pra pradeep is we are not a taiga partner we are actually just using taiga we are showing you what Tiger can do. So um, best if you want to do some sort of uh, partner uh, to do some pro promotion of all this tool, perhaps you can talk to the Tiger uh, developers or the company itself. They are, I'm pretty sure they are very willing to do so. And of course, this tool is useful to these um, project managers, especially when they want to manage projects and uh, the next question uh, question is do i have any good link to install taiga and linux um well there if you go to the taiga page itself right um let me go here okay and then you can you should be able to see here is support and you can see here is how do I install Taiga on my own? And there are a few ways of installing. So you can try to check it out by following these steps. You should be able to get your own production environment set up. Uh, that's, and that is exactly what I did. Okay, so um, are there any more questions that you would like to ask? So if there are no more questions, I would like to thank everyone for having taken some time to attend this webinar. Do sign up for our newsletter because we will have more webinars coming every week. And uh, a recording of this webinar will be sent to you by my colleague later on. And then I wish you all a very good day. Thank you very much.